I'm Cave Jewel, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show... We are taking a closer look at Dark Knight's Metal issue number four. The planet Earth is careening into the Dark Universe. Can the Justice League stop it? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we rejoin the story in progress, Batman and Superman have had their youth sucked out of them and are lashed to the giant Dark Knight battery powering the descent of Earth into the Dark Universe. Guarding our two heroes are Superman's worst nightmares. Basically think the Dark Knights, but as they are to the Man of Steel. I gotta say, I love their designs. I want to know their stories now. Batman, even though he's weakened, is always prepared and has a device he calls the, get this, Five Finger Death Punch. Huh, didn't think Batman was a fan of that band, but there you go. Basically, it's a gauntlet laced with five different types of kryptonite. What could it do to you? I don't know. Could melt all of these guys' skins off? Could just make them sparkly? This is a pretty good gamble, but in the end, it's not good enough. Batman has to do what he hates doing oh so much, and that is actually calling Dream for help. Now while this is going on, the rest of the Justice League, including Wonder Woman, is running around and trying to gather as much Nth Metal as they can to fight the Dark Knights. This story makes no reference to anything that happened in the pages of Bats Out of Hell, making it so that that little side tie-in story was completely pointless. By far, it's Green Lantern and Mr. Terrific who probably have the hardest uphill battle, going to the planet Thanagar to try and get their help with battling the Dark Knights. Only as our heroes get there, the entire planet has already been conquered by Onomar Sin, a Jeff Johns creation, a demon who eats Nth Metal, and someone who managed to subjugate all the other Thanagarians, with the help of everyone's favorite psychic alien starfish, Star-O, aka the first villain the Justice League ever fought, so what we essentially have here is a deep cut right next to an even deeper cut. Now, when Superman and Batman come to, they're in the Lucian Library, a weird kind of splinter dimension where all of the world's greatest stories are held. It seems that Barbatos is so evil and his influence so toxic that the books in the library are slowly burning one by one, which is pretty bad for Dream. Now, he can't physically help our heroes, but he can give them some much-needed information. He says that in the beginning, there was matter and antimatter, a monitor and an anti-monitor. There was also a world forge, home to the purest form of metal imaginable, just what our heroes would need to turn the tide against Barbatos, assuming he hasn't already conquered that place, of course. Now back on Earth, Wonder Woman and Kendra Saunders manage to find the Rock of Eternity. Wonder Woman hopes to use the metal to turn the tide of battle, but Kendra is doing the bidding of the Immortals. The plan was, if they could fire the Anti-Monitor's brain directly into the Rock of Eternity, doing so could very well destroy the Dark Universe. It could also very well undo all of creation, but hey, you gotta roll the dice once or twice. In the end, Wonder Woman doesn't even have to stop her as evil corruption seeps all around and Kendra Saunders is turned into, well, Black Hawk. Ooh, I like this. She can be Hawkwoman without really being Hawkwoman. Nice job. Now, Batman and Superman are ultimately able to traverse the dark passages of the Dark Universe and find their way to the World Forge, only they are too late. Barbatos has conquered the place and it's all gone black. And to make matters worse, as the comic begins to wind down, they come face to face with the Protector of the Forge, Katar Hull, a.k.a. Hawkman, a.k.a. the Dragon of Barbatos. And yeah, there you have it, everybody. Dark Knight's Metal issue number four. I gotta take my hat off to this issue for managing to be so bleak, yet also so exciting at the same time. Also, if you're like me and thought four issues in that this book would start to, you know, get a lot smaller, a little bit more focused, you would be wrong. It only gets bigger and more intricate, with more deep cuts and callbacks to other moments from DC mythology. Here, Dream manages to flesh out an entire creation myth for the planet Earth, complete with a ton of biblical references. Hey, Sunday school, never say it, never taught me anything. Wherein Barbatos is referred to as a dragon, aka what they called Satan early on in the Bible. There's also multiple new factions introduced in this issue, all wishing to accomplish their own goals completely outside of that of the Dark Knights. It'd be very easy for this stuff to become complicated, and yet it's just such a page-turner and so satisfying. I really dig it. I would give this one an 8.5. 
5 out of 10. Not quite as mind-blowing as the other issues that preceded it, but still pretty solid and still telling one hell of a story. So that's Dark Knights, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, want to check out some of these other videos I have available. Then you can follow me on social media, at Cape Joel, so you're always up to date on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you like what I do and are feeling in a supportive mood, be sure to check out my Patreon page. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month, which would be most appreciated. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.